Hey guys, welcome to another product showcase video. This showcase is going to be on the Silent X Extreme Silent CPU Cooler Ephesio. Okay, well first up, let's have a look at the package. It has a nice green package with the uh, name of the cooler on it, 18 decibels written on it. You can see the fin design as well as the copper heat pipes. On the side of the uh, box we have the specifications. It's 105 millimeters long, 131 millimeters wide, and 153 millimeters high. It uh, weighs in at 836 grams. It's copper heat pipe, aluminum fin, uh, speeds are 800 to 2000 RPM, decibel is 8 to 28 decibel, airflow is 34 to 102 CFM, voltage is 5 to 12 volts, current is 0 0.36 amps, power is 4.32 watts, and it uses a fluid dynamic bearing. Uh, this cooler will work on pretty much all of the uh, newer uh, CPU sockets, everything back from the uh, 939, 940, AM2, AM2 Plus, AMD line, all the way through the AM3s, socket 754, uh, socket 1156, socket 1366. Um, so basically anything that's been made in the last several years, this will fit. Um, on the other side of the box, we have some pictures of the unit itself including its direct heat pipe uh, design where it'll touch directly on the CPU uh, optimized fan blades for the greatest air to noise ratio as you know uh, Silent X fans are exceptional and uh, some information on the universal mounts that come with it for the uh, different CPUs let's open it up and see what it comes with okay inside the box itself you're going to find a very uh, generous selection of things that they include with the package. Uh, first off is your uh, installation guide that will explain to you the different accessories that come with it as well as how to install it on uh, different socket types. It has a bag for your uh, AMD mounts for uh, AMD K8, AM2, AM2+, Plus, AM3. It has another uh, accessory package here of nuts and washers and uh, your bolts to install on your Intel 775, 1156, or 1366 sockets. It comes with some uh, fiber washers, some uh, double-sided foam to mount your uh, included fan controller. comes with your universal backing plate that has the different holes marked out depending on uh, which socket style you're installing to. They include a uh, container of their thermal grease for the uh, cooler itself, as well as eight uh, anti-vibration mounts for the fan. That's very nice. Um, most of the time when you buy these coolers, you maybe will get four or you know, enough to mount the included fan that comes with it. And I love the fact that they include eight so that you can add a second fan and do a push-pull configuration. And it also comes with your white 120 millimeter fan that will mount on there. And then the cooler itself. So let me uh, set this stuff aside and we'll have a closer look at the cooler. Okay, as you can see the uh, heat pipe design, the direct touch heat pipe design. There's uh, five heat pipes on this very uh, large heat pipes at that. Uh, with aluminum fins, everything is very well soldered. Um, actually, it's uh, very, very heavy, very uh, solid design. Um, I like the fact that the fins themselves are not the flimsy ones like I've seen on other coolers that would bend very easily. These are nice and uh, tough fins, so you're not going to bend it do a lot of damage to it. I also like the fact that on the sides here, as you can see, the fins are enclosed. 
and the advantage to that is when you mount a fan on here it's going to force all the air right through and right um, right through the fins and right over the uh, heat tubes themselves it can't escape out of the side and if you're going to do a push-pull configuration on both sides of it it's definitely going to force all the air right through the cooler for optimum cooling um, it comes with the mounting base already included on it and it looks like the uh, finish itself let's peel this off has a very nice finish on the copper heat pipes very nice and level got a good reflection out of it so it's it's very well uh, polished we are going to do some uh, benchmarks on this cooler I'm going to install this on a socket uh, 775 motherboard and we're going to uh, compare the temperatures on this compared to the uh, stock coolers that you get with your Intel and uh, see what kind of uh, temperature difference we can get okay we're all ready to uh, start our benchmark test um, we have the gigabyte board installed in the high-speed PC top bench uh, tech station uh, we're going to start with the stock Intel cooler I just wanted to show you the cooler was cleaned as well as the processor and to uh, make the test fair we're going to use the uh, Silent X paste on both this and the Silent X cooler so people can say that the paste didn't actually make a difference so uh, let's get this started up and do some uh, temperature checks Okay, at stock speeds, 2.8 gigahertz, uh, at idle with the uh, Intel stock cooler, we have about 47 degrees, 48 degrees. Let's check what it does under load. Okay, with the uh, stock Intel cooler running at 2.8 gigahertz, this is our load test with Prime 95 running. We're at about uh, 66 degrees load temperature. Okay, with the processor at 3.4 gigahertz, uh, idle temperature is right around 60 degrees Celsius, uh, just idling. We'll check it under load. Okay, at 3.4 gigahertz, under 100% load, running uh, Prime 95. Uh, our temperature is about 73 degrees with the stock cooler. We're getting ready to uh, mount the new Silent X cooler on it. As you can see, I have the uh, fan mounts already on it. Where I'll slide the back plate under there, and then we'll uh, apply some of the uh, Silent X thermal paste. So we can use the same one that we used with the stock. Okay, I just wanted to show that we have the uh, cooler mounted now, and uh, wanted to mention that it's actually quite easy to mount the uh, mounts for the cooler itself, especially without having the fan installed. If you have the fan in place you might have a little trouble trying to get underneath to tighten these down but uh, without the fan on there it's really uh, one of the easier coolers I've seen to mount in a while. Okay we're up and running we have it on the uh, stock or default settings for the processor at 2.8 I did uh, install the included fan controller so we can uh, try some temperatures with uh, the different fan settings on it. Right now, if you can make that out, we're idling at uh, stock temperatures at about 28 degrees and that's on the low sand fan setting. So we'll uh, crank it up to high and uh, try that for a minute or two. Okay, with the uh, Silent X fan, stock uh, CPU settings. High fan speed idle is about 25 degrees Celsius. Not bad at all. So let's put this under load and see what the temperatures do. Okay, we've been running uh, Prime 95 for a while here on uh, both cores. Uh, this is on the low fan setting, 900 RPMs, and uh, we're seeing temperatures about 44 degrees. So we're going to crank the fan up to high and uh, check the temperature then. Okay, with the uh, fan setting on high, um, we're seeing right around 37, 38 degrees uh, 
with the stock uh, speed on the CPU. Okay, at uh, 3.4 gigahertz with the uh, fan on low setting, we're idling. Uh, we got about 32 degrees. We'll crank it up to 100% and see what the temperature does. Okay, at 3.4 gigahertz with the fan on 100%, our uh, idle temperature is about 30 degrees. Okay, we're overclocked now at 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, fan speed is uh, on low at 900 RPMs. And our temperature is about 51 degrees Celsius. So we'll uh, crank the fan up to 100% and see what it does then. Okay, with uh, both cores running at 100%, the uh, fan is running at 100% at 3.4 gigahertz. Our temperature is about 48 degrees. Not bad at all. Uh, very nice cooler, uh, good temperatures. We'll uh, put a little report at the end of it, including all the different temperatures. But uh, that's going to do it for this product showcase. We want to thank Silent X for providing this for us. And this was their Extreme Ephesio CPU cooler. Thanks for watching.